Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at disk encryption with Veracrypt. Now in the PGP video, a lot of you guys actually wanted to know how to perform disk encryption and more specifically how to perform uh, disk encryption with Veracrypt. Alright, so this has brought up its own questions and I'll be sure to answer them throughout the video. So the first question that you might be having is... What exactly is Veracrypt? Well, Veracrypt is essentially a free and open source disk encryption software that works on Windows, Mac OS and Linux, which is really, really great because it does support multi-platform support, which means that you can transfer your volumes and encrypted files uh, or encrypted drives from one uh, operating system to another, and you can therefore access them on those uh, particular operating systems. In this case, it supports Windows, Mac and Linux, so you're pretty much good to go. Now, a lot of you guys were asking me the alternative to Veracrypt uh, on Windows, and that is BitLocker. Now, BitLocker has had a long history with Windows, but it only comes uh, installed uh, in certain versions of Windows. And if you're wondering what versions I'm talking about, I'm talking about the professional and ultimate versions that were first introduced with Windows 7, if I'm not wrong. And they essentially came with these enterprise features like disk encryption, and th that's what BitLocker would, uh, would support or would provide. Now, there are disadvantages to using or encrypting your system drive, and I'll explain that as we move along. But the second question that comes into mind when talking about encryption is, why do we need to encrypt data, files, or our drives? Why would we want to do it? And of course, that question brings a, 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 a lot of answers back, and I'll try and give you as many answers as possible. Well, the first reason that you want to do this, uh, that you'd want to do this is, first of all, you'd like to protect your data from unauthorized access. And of course, this can be spread into multi, uh, it can sp be spread into multiple facets when I talk about preventing data uh, uh, f from being accessed uh, by unauthorized personnel. So you could have files on your desktop at work uh, that you'd like to encrypt that you don't want anyone else to see. And that comes into the uh, the triage of the confidentiality, integrity and availability uh, system where we talked about the CIA of security. Uh, and of course, this may also be a security policy th for the company that you work for. So if you are handling confidential data documents or any other data that is confidential, the company might have various security policies that do involve encryption. So I'll give you an example. If you are working for a company and you're working, for example, on their accounts, it is standard procedure to encrypt the data after you're done working on it uh, and uh, when it is being transmitted. So in the event that a hacker is able to sort of intercept the data being sent, it is encrypted and therefore cannot be accessed. That is becoming quite a standard secu uh, security policy for companies. The other reason is if you're an activist or, or a hacktivist and you want to protect yourself, you can encrypt your system drive or your C drive so that your browsing data or your history and cookies are also encrypted. Now, of course, this is one way of looking at it. And of course, we have other operating systems uh, that look at encryption and privacy slightly differently. One of them being Cubes OS and Tails. Tails essentially uh, does not have any persistent uh, it does not really work with persistence. So essentially, once you're done browsing and your session is over, your data is wiped, which is really not good in, in the event you uh, that you want persistence. So if you do want to run, uh, you, if you do want to use your normal operating system, but uh, you, you still want to maintain a certain level of privacy and anonymity, one of the ways of doing so is by encrypting your drives. All right, uh, and then we move along to isolation of particular files. So for those of you working with ransomware and malware, for those of you who are uh, reverse engineers or malware analysis, uh, or you work in malware analysis, you know that if you do have a particular virus or malware that you're working on and you bring it onto a Windows operating system, your antivirus will get rid of it. So uh, some, for those of you who would like to create uh, isolated volumes, this is a great way of doing it as well. All right, and finally, you have your encrypted file containers uh, that can be transferred. So, for example, one, uh, one, one reason you may want to encrypt your files is if you're taking backups of your system and you want to upload them to the cloud so that you have a, a good archive of all your backups and you want to protect your data in the process in case your cloud storage is breached, one good, one good way of protecting them is by encrypting them. All right, so the key points to take are encryption and decryption will require uh, will require quite a bit of CPU processing power, all right? So depending on your system specs and the size of the drive and the files you're, you're trying to encrypt or decrypt, 
it can be time consuming. And this is where the C drive or your system drive comes into place. If you are going to en encrypt your, your entire system drive or your C drive that is constantly being used, you're going to notice a lot of slowdown on your system. So what will happen is when opening files, closing them, reading files, writing uh, data to files. So for example, if you're working with documents, if you're running a virtual machine, it's all going to slow down because the files are constantly being encrypted and stored or decrypted when you want to read them. So it is recommended that you do not encrypt your system drive, rather create volumes where you can store the files that you want to encrypt. All right, so if you encrypt files or drives that are constantly being read and written to, they can take longer to load uh, and uh, they will take longer to save because they are constantly being accessed, uh, encrypted and decrypted, uh, so on and so forth, regardless of the speed of your drive. Uh, but of course, this is all in, uh, in parallel to your CPU uh, and how fast it can, it can actually handle these, uh, these encryption and re decryption requests. All right, so... That is uh, the key points to take in essence. Encryption can cause, uh, can cause slowdowns if you're encrypting the main drive. So my recommendation is do not encrypt your main C or system drive if you're on Linux or Mac OS. On Windows, you'll pretty much be using the C drive for your system. All right, now the other points that you might have, and I know this is taking quite a while, is what can you do with Veracrypt? Well, Veracrypt allows you to create a virtual encrypted disk within a file and then it mounts it as a real disk so that you can make changes to that particular mounted volume. And of course, this is going to be in parallel to your, your actual physical drive specifications. So if your drive physical drive is 5400 RPM, then the virtual encrypted disk that will be mounted will also be working at the same speed, which is awesome. All right, it also allows you to encrypt an entire partition or storage device, such as a USB flash drive, which, are what, which is what I'll be demonstrating. It allows you to encrypt a partition or drive where Windows is installed. So this is your system drive, which I don't recommend because of the slowdowns. Uh, the other great features is that it's automatic, real-time, and transparent. And of course, you have, parallel, you have the, parallel, uh, the parallelization and the pipelining that allows data to, to, be, uh, to be read and written as fast as... Uh, as if the drive was not being encrypted. So that is a great thing that, they've had, that they have introduced. All right, and the last thing that they have introduced that's awesome is the hardware, accelerate, uh, hardware acceleration for your encryption, which uh, really will speed up the process of encrypting and the decryption of files. All right, now that being said, we can finally get started. I know that was quite a bit of an introduction, but I needed to give it so that we understand where we're going. All right, so I have uh, the, Ver the Veracrypt website opened up in my browser. I'll be posting the link in the description. It is uh, veracrypt.fr. You can check that out for yourself. And you can finally just go ahead and read uh, all the, the introduction and the features. But if we want to download, we can go to downloads here. And from here, you can download the portable version for Windows or the setup, which is what I've done. And I'll show you how to install it. You also have your macOS DMG file. You have your Linux, FreeBSD, and the source code. Really, really cool. All right. So once you've downloaded the appropriate version uh, for your operating system, we're good to go. Now, many of you will be wondering why I'm not covering Linux. And that's because the process is essentially the same. The only thing that will vary is the installation. All right. So I'm just going to click on the setup right over here and we'll launch the setup. I haven't installed it before, so you'll be going through with it just with me as well. All right, so we can uh, go, and, uh, go ahead and start the setup. I'm gonna accept uh, the license terms, make sure to go through them if you are interested. Hit next, and we want to install, and I'm just gonna uh, make sure that the settings are set to default and hit install. So it's gonna create a system restore point, and uh, we'll wait for this to complete. So I'll get back to you when this is complete. All right, so the installation is complete and we can hit finish and uh, it'll give you this little uh, warning right over here. If you have never used Vercrypt before, we recommend that you read the chapters beginner's tutorial, which is why you wanted me to make the video because it is quite complicated. So I don't want to go through the, uh, the beginner's tutorial here and we can just start up Vercrypt. It's going to be on my desktop here, so I'm just going to start it up. And uh, here you are, welcome to Veracrypt. Now, uh, the way it's set up, it uh, isn't really intuitive because you're really wondering what exactly is going on here. So the first thing you want to do is create a volume, all right? And I'll explain as we go along. So do stay, uh, do keep your attention focused here. So when you hit uh, create a new volume, all right, what's going to happen here is it's going to give you options, all right? And this is the volume creation wizard. So the first thing you can do is you can, create an, uh, you can create an encrypted file container. 
All right, so you can create uh, an encrypted file container and that will create a virtual encrypted disk within a file. That is pretty much what I recommend doing. All right, you then have uh, the ability to encrypt a non-system partition or drive. This means any drive that is not associated with the system or does not have uh, an operating system installed on it. So this could be a flash drive, an external hard drive. You get the idea. And this will encrypt the entire drive, something very important to take into consideration. And this is good for those of you who are transferring really confidential files and uh, you're storing them on a flash drive, for example, and you want to encrypt the entire flash drive uh, in, in the event you lose the flash drive and someone picks it up, they are not able to access those files until the format, the, the flash drive. So you're pretty much good to go there. You then have the ability to encrypt the system partition on the entire sy system drive. I don't recommend doing this. As you can see, it does give you a description right over here. Encrypts the partition or drive where Windows is installed. Anyone who wants to gain access and uh, use the system, read or write files, etc. will need to enter the correct password each time before Windows boots. I don't recommend this, especially if you're for, if you're one of those people who have been playing around with your bootloader and have a dual boot system in place. This is something you want to stay as far away from as possible. All right, we'll start off with an encrypted file container and explain what's going on. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to tell me, do I want a standard Vercrypt volume? Select this option if you want to create a normal Vercrypt volume that is uh, visible and accessible. And then you have the hidden Vercrypt volume, which uh, you, this is when you want to hide the volume itself and only you know where you, only you will know where it is. So it may happen that you're forced by somebody to reveal the password to an encrypted volume. There are many situations where you cannot refuse to reveal the password, for example, due to extortion. It's giving you a very, very good premise of how important encryption is. So using a so-called hidden volume allows you to solve such situations uh, without revealing the password to your volume. So if the encrypted volume is hidden and is hidden from plain sight, that is, then you're pretty much good. Uh, you don't have to even uh, tell them that you have an encrypted file here. In the event that they do find one, uh, then they're going to pretty much force you to reveal the password. And only you know the password, which is also something to take into consideration. So we'll go with standard. You can also check out hidden. The process is essentially the same, apart from the fact that your volume will be hidden. I'm going to hit next. It's going to ask me to select, uh, it's going to ask me for the volume location. And uh, this is where you essentially uh, save the volume. This is very important. If you want to save the volume on a flash drive, you should do it right now. You can also save it on an external hard drive, on any drive that you have on your system that does not contain any system files or anywhere in your system that you want to store the, uh, the encrypted volume. All right. So this is the container file and it'll call you, this will be called the Vercrypt container which we can reside in any of the following options here. Uh, so you can see if you select an existing file, Vercrypt will not encrypt uh, it. The file will be deleted and replaced by the new one. So that's very important. So I'm going to save mine on my desktop here. And I'm just going to call it, uh, we're just going to call it test, test volume so that I can actually show you what's going on. And uh, the other thing to note is the Vercrypt container extension is called, uh, is the, it uses the VC file extension, just in case you are wondering. I'm going to hit next right over here. It's going to ask me for encryption or the encryption algorithm that I want to use. In this case, you can select whatever encryption algorithm you want to use. In my case, I will simply stick with the standard AES and the hash algorithm will be uh, can also be specified here. So I'll use SHA-512, which is the highest and the best as of right now. Uh, and you can you can essentially just test it if you want. But in my case, I'm just going to hit next. It's going to ask me to specify uh, the volume size, which is important because if you create a volume with, uh, let's say, 10 gigabytes, and you want to cr and you want to move files into the volume that you want to encrypt that are over 10 gigabytes, you will not be able to do so. So make sure you choose you choose the size appropriately. In my case, I'll just select, for example, 100 megabytes, and uh, I, this is uh, for for example, if I wanted to store important documents in a volume, so I'll just hit megabytes 100, specify that there, hit next. The password, this is very important because if you forget this password, that volume can never be accessed. Something very important to take into consideration. All right. And uh, this is another feature that Vercrypt introduced where it added enhanced security to the, algorithm, uh, the algorithms that are being used to hash. Uh, for these are for either the partitions or the encrypted volumes, essentially making these volumes immune to brute force attacks. And I say that given the relative strength of the password that you use. So make sure you store this password safely. I'll just type in a simple password right over here. 
and uh, you can then go ahead and hit next and it'll tell you this right over here short passwords are easy to crack using brute force techniques we recommend using a password of consisting of 20 or more characters yes i want to use this this is simply for demonstration so if you are going to use a long password i'll recommend using a password manager for that hit yes and now you want to select your file system i'm going to select ntfs and the cluster will just keep that uh, as the default and now this is going to ask you for randomness uh, because it's going to collect randomness uh, for the hashing process over here. So I'm just going to try and move it as much as possible here as, uh, as I can. And uh, then once you're ready to go, we can simply hit format. All right. And uh, once it is formatted, the uh, volume should be created on our desktop here. It's going to ask me for administrator privileges. And uh, we're just going to wait for that to complete. And I'll show you how to mount the volume now. All right, so the volume has successfully been created. Hit next, and we can exit out of that wizard uh, right over there. All right, so now when we talk about opening a particular volume, you want to go into Veracrypt again and select the file, and you want to select where you saved the file. In my case, it is the test volume. Open that up, and now you want to specify the drive letter you want to mount this volume on. So for example, I'll say volume R, just an example, and I'll hit uh, mount, and it's gonna ask me for the password. And I'm going to hit OK, and uh, you can sp specify the other options in regards to the uh, to you how your password will be cached, uh, whether you want uh, whether or not you want the password to be cached uh, uh, via the key files in your memory, which I don't re recommend. Uh, but I'll just hit OK, and it's going to start mounting the volume. So again, depending on the size of the volume, uh, you want to give it a few seconds to a few minutes, uh, and this is going to just be dependent on the size of the volume. All right, so once you have mounted your volume, you can now click on it and it'll open up the volume for you. And you can see this is local disk R and you can store all the files that you want encrypted right over here and you should be good to go. All right, and uh, once you're done, once you've written all the files, you can simply unmount and there you are. So the, uh, the mounting and unmounting process is very, very simple once you have the file. The important thing to note is that you should make sure that your password is saved somewhere secure. All right, so now let's talk about encrypting an entire drive or an external hard drive or a flash disk, whatever you're talking that anything, any drive that isn't uh, related to the system or isn't a system partition. All right, so to do that, we go and hit create volume. And uh, I'm just going to, no, I do not want to resume that. So do not prompt me, hit OK, and we can get started. All right, so when talking about uh, the encryption uh, of a non-system partition drive, you want to select that option right over here. And in our case, we're going to be using a flash drive and hopefully I, I can explain exactly what's going on. All right. So now from here again, you can specify whether you want a standard Veracrypt volume or you want a hidden Veracrypt volume, whatever suits you better. I'm going to hit next. You want to now select your device. I'm going to select my flash drive and I'm going to specify the partition. That is very important because you can also create various partitions within a flash drive or an external hard drive and selecting the partition that you want encrypted is very very important all right now my particular flash drive has no current files in it apologies for that uh, it has nothing with it right now so uh, you if you wanted to encrypt anything it would be better if you did right now however I'll get to that in a second so I'm going to hit next uh, so now what's going to happen is it's going to give you two options now this is very important to, to take into consideration so the first option is create an, encry an encrypted volume and format it so this is the fastest way to create a partition hosted of device hosted Veracrypt volume in place encryption, which is the other option is slower because uh, the content of each sector and it is re it is referring to the encryption partition, uh, the encrypt partition in place. Any data currently stored on the selected partition or device will be lost. The data will not be encrypted, will not be overwritten. So that should be your standard option when going on with a flash drive. So you'd encrypt the drive and then you can mount it and then store any files you want in it, etc., etc. All right. If you want to go with the second option, which is the entire selected partition and all the data stored on it will be encrypted in place. If the partition is empty, you should choose the other option. In our case, it is empty. So we'll go with, the, with that option. But if you want to encrypt the files that already exist within the flash drive, you, you should select encrypt partition in place. But I would recommend going with the first option because this is going to take a while depending on the size of the drive that you're dealing with. In my case, I'm dealing with a uh, trivial 7.5 to 8 gigabytes here. So I'm going to hit next. 
Again, for this particular case, because of how long it's going to take, I you can first of all start benchmarking, but I'll stick with uh, SHA-256 here. And of course, that is we're using the uh, AES encryption algorithm. This is something to take into consideration because if you have a slow drive or a USB 2.0 flash drive, this might take uh, a while depending on, on, on the size of the drive as well. So I'm going to next. It's going to uh, it's going to specify the entire partition because that's the only partition I did create in the flash drive or exists by default. I'm going to hit next. I'm just going to prompt me for my password here. I'm going to hit next as well. And there we are. It's going to give me the warning again. Short passwords are easy to crack or using brute force techniques. I'm just going to hit yes. Uh, it's going to ask me whether I intend to store files larger than four gigabytes. And of course, depending on your, the, the choice above, Veracrypt will choose a suitable def default file system for the Veracrypt volume. Uh, and I'm just going to hit no because I don't intend to. I'm going to hit next. And now again, we'll select the uh, NTFS file system. I prefer that. Uh, and you can also select the cluster here. And we can then start generating some randomness here. Uh, or entropy uh, is what is it is also referred as uh, or referred to as. I'm just going to wait for this to complete loading. And we can go ahead and hit format. So there we are. All files currently stored on the selected partition will be erased and lost. And we're going to hit yes right over here. And we're going to wait for that to start formatting. Now, again, I told you, depending on the size of the partition and the speed of the drive, this is a USB 2.0 drive. It's going to give you the approximate uh, time left here, uh, right over here. And it'll tell you the percentage that is done, the speed in which it is, uh, it is, uh, it is actually communicating uh, with the system. So that is standard USB 2 speed, which is 3.9 to 4 megabyte, uh, megabytes per second, something important there. So that is how to essentially uh, create an encrypted drive or an encrypted uh, flash drive. Although I do not recommend using this way because you're encrypting the entire drive or the entire partition, which is which will work very well. But again, you I like sticking with volumes as I demonstrated in the previous demonstration where I have the test volume right over here, which I can copy to any flash drive. And again, the encryption is going to use the same uh, hashing algorithm and the encryption algorithm. So I'm just going to abort this. I'm going to abort the format and I'm just going to cancel the entire process right over here. All right, so that is how to use Veracrypt to create uh, your encrypted volumes and how to encrypt uh, various uh, various disks, uh, of these being non-system partitions. Uh, so yeah, I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comment section on my social networks or on the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.